What's up, everybody? My name is Indy, and welcome to Indie Game Business. That gentleman right over there is Mr. J, and we got Michael Grand in the middle. Hello. Michael is from Ifthin, Ifthin Software LLC in Southern Oregon, just like a few miles away from where I live. And you could have oh, just, cool. just came over. Yeah. <laughs> you could have just drove oh, over, awesome. honestly. You could yeah, I didn't even think about we'll that. Do that in the future. Yeah, I did. I didn't I realize that was. Yeah, he's he's in the Grants Pass, which is what like twenty miles or something. Yeah, it's that's not that far off. Now yeah. is it like you know where I am in the mountains? So twenty miles means like an hour and a half. No, it's it's like you just get on the freeway and then take an exit, yeah. and it's like five minutes, yeah. at least in my house, anyways. No, yeah, so. Right by the freeway. Oh, we just had a noise. And so they are releasing their very first game on Steam. Yep. Soon. And soon. Yes. Ju well, so soon. Yes. Soon. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon. Uh, if Fruit Crawler. I got to play it. You guys can't play it yet. Here, let me put it. I'm going to post a link up in chat. Oh, there's the music to it right there. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> oh, I'm on the Steam page. Jump you. Yeah, the trailer's so like blam. <laughs> so I Open played it, and it's you know, it's like it's kind of it's a worm game basically, but yeah. it's different. I played it, and I'm like, this is kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so it's like a worm level by level puzzle game where you eat stuff, and I, I realized that it was a bit different after I got like in the tutorial, the second and third level. I'm like. I'm not sure I get this. And then you realize it and you're like, oh, I can do this thing instead. So yeah. it's it's like you took Worm, the, the this genre, and just kind of ex expanded on it with a bunch of other ideas, right? Yeah, and that's what we wanted to do. We, uh, we uh, actually originally started with just a basic uh, Worm type game. And uh, we were playing and we we're like, well, what can we do to make this more interesting and uh my brother who uh does the design work for it um said hey, well we unity makes integrating physics with a game really super easy so let's try adding physics to it and uh this here is the uh, end result that's it's, awesome it's, yeah it's pretty fun here let me see is that working that's works great there we go so tell us, I mean, how did you I always like to start with, with how did you get here, Michael? How did you actually get in the industry from the beginning? Um, oh, uh, okay. So, <laughs> all right. So I originally um, was interested in uh, like when I was really young um, in doing art and design for games. Um, I'd been interested in that for a while because I, I grew up with uh, playing games on the uh, nintendo and um uh, on my dad's old uh computer i, I forget was it a, it might have been a commodore um, but he would let me play games on that um my dad was also a, a programmer and so i uh at some point i decided hey let's try out this programming stuff you know that sounds interesting so i i wound up doing that instead of art and design like i originally wanted to um but that's how i started in it and um yeah i'm not really sure where to go from there uh, <laughs> um so wow sorry i'm, I'm just trying to uh tr trying to think back uh we've made a few different projects in the past and um probably our biggest ones were a few online rpgs we um released let's see First, we released Lorden back in 2003, um, and Stick Adventures Online was 2006, and then Volan Preview 1. I don't remember exactly when that came in. That was like 2008? No, it wasn't that early. It was like 2010, I think. Um, Stick Adventures Online, though, was definitely our most popular product. Um, unfortunately, um, none of these games were actually um, monetized, which... I, I, I still have nightmares about that. And that's the reason why the projects are no longer alive now, because they couldn't support themselves. Um, so if you guys go looking for it, you'll see screenshots and videos of people playing it. But the games are no longer online right now, just because we can't support the infrastructure required to keep a game like that running. Um, so was it just a, a hobby thing that y'all were doing then? Yeah, it was just it was a hobby thing. But we, we always had in, in mind that we wanted to transition to 
um, doing this professionally. Um, but that transition never quite, never quite came. Um, wow, your mic is uh, just got really happened. super staticky. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, one second. What you can do is you can just leave the call really quick and then come back. Is it better now? There we go. That's better. Whew, okay. That was weird. I was worried about that. Now you're muted. <laughs> Damn you, electronics! All right. Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's per. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I think that should be fixed. Are you having a tech issue um, where it just does that every once randomly? Yeah, I think it's because the buffer size was too low, so I've increased that up to 512. And we, that oh, uh, really fix it. it's not because you were, is that what it was? Because I have a focus right and it kept doing the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the um, ASIO buffer size. So if you increase the buffer size a bit, that might fix it. Um, or wow. at least it'll push it off a little bit longer. Good to know. Okay. Um, I just thought that the focus right was broken. So I, I bought a new one, and then now I think I have two oh, of no. them, but they're in my garage. Uh, yeah, that might fix the issue. Um, okay. But yeah, static co coming into audio is a, is a problem that just happens at, like for a multitude of annoying reasons. All right, all right. So where we're um, so so oh yeah, games, we got kind of de uh, distracted, de derailed. Uh, we so, all, so the, you, we always get distracted. That's that's part of the show. Yeah, but did you learn? <laughs> you learned lessons about monetizing stuff, right? With those games. Um. Well, yeah, we we learned what not to do. Um. So that's the um, best thing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't learn by doing it correctly. That's the thing. Yeah, this is true. Uh, we uh, we learned that for us, ad-based uh, monetization doesn't quite work out, at least not with the types of games we want to make. Um, and uh, to make a, um, a a game like that successful, I believe you would either need a subscription system or microtransactions, which you know m most of those games have. But the infrastructure you need in order to have something like that running is um, is a bit intense. So uh, that's why we're switching over to making single player games, like a single purchase, nice and easy. Steam handles the whole thing for us. Steam, HIO, Game Jolt, that handle the whole payment system for us. We don't have to have any backend systems or anything going much easier. And uh, we figure we can build up from here in order to be able to get back to multiplayer games. Um, but yeah. Well, that's good common sense too. You know, a lot of developers like get into like, I'm going to make my first game. It's going to be a 3D MMO oh my God, and have yes. all of this yeah. stuff. And it's like, really, you got to. And so are people are like, well, I have to wait till I get a good computer and a da da da. No, make the game that you can make that you have the power to make now. Even if you got an old crappy yeah. laptop and that's all you got, just work on it and make make a game because, like. I don't know what the actual percentage is, but I would guess 70 to 90% of game developers that are game developers that start working on a game never even finish a game. And just yeah. finishing a game is yeah. huge. So, yeah. I mean, when you started, I mean, you did the first ones, and like you said, there was no monetization, so you couldn't support it. And then you started looking at basically the Worms games and then add physics. So, you know, what else did you do in terms of I mean, did you do any prototyping early on? Did you do, you know, testings and iterations? And how did you come to get to the the core game loop that you've got right now? Oh, uh, so the uh, Fruit Crawler is based on a game that we made for a game jam. It was a Dark Basic game jam. Uh, Dark Basic was an old game engine. I don't know if anyone here uh, is familiar with it, but um, th they ran a, a, a game jam or game competition for... Um, uh, was that back in 2008-ish, like in, in that range? So uh, this was an older game that we decided this was fun. Um, let's make a full product out of it. And uh, so we started with that base level. Uh, we converted it over into Unity because originally it was made in Dark Basic. Um, we converted over into Unity, and then we just started playing around with it a bit and uh, come up with ideas for ways that we could make it more fun. Um, the, the physics, uh, like playing around with physics was the, the biggest change that we made, I think. Um, there, uh, we, we tried a bunch of different things with that too. Um, one of the 
like the most fun but uh most useless uh prototypes i think was um or, or at least useless from a mechanic standpoint was when we applied physics to the entire tail so you would be um slinking around grabbing the fruit and stuff and your tail would just be going all over the place and just whipping around <laughs> and hitting yourself in the head and stuff it was it was a nightmare but it was so much fun to watch i don't think people would have had fun playing it uh we're, we're, we're kind of thinking maybe trying to make a game out of that in the future but um that was the first iteration of that and uh it was just small changes to it the tail mechanics and a physics um in uh in fruit crawler with the physics interactions and whatnot they are really fiddly, and uh, the version that um, that Indy is playing, or I, I can't see the stream. I, I assume he's playing it, or but um, the the version that Indy uh, has is um, a little bit older. We just yesterday made it so that the tail operates even better. So um, one of the major problems that you'll have, and I forget which, uh, which level has this, but there's a le level that's mostly spikes and you have to loop around and um, get to the end using ability free. You get to the end of the level. And by the time you're about here, so the exit is here, you kind of snake around like this. By the time you get here, your tail is so long, and it's through a bunch of twists and turns in the level that it starts to knot up, and the physics system just, like, breaks. And you have the... And um, the solution, in case anyone is, is uh, interested, is um, we, have, uh, we have it so the tail segments are... Um, each tail segment is always trying to make sure that it gets directly behind the next segment. So you have one here, and you have the tail segment here. So let's say this tail segment is facing directly left. The tail segment right behind it wants to get to this point. It wants to be directly behind it. And this point moves depending on the orientation of the headpiece. And that fixed the problem. Um, actually, it's really cool because now, because, of, because each tail piece is trying to make sure that it um, they all line up. The tail actually moves out of your way, which is something it currently doesn't do in the version that Indy has. Um, your tail is constantly like right behind you, and then you have to try and carefully maneuver around it. In this version, it kind of just like moves out of the way because the whole tail is trying to get out of the way and behind your other segments. I don't nice. even remember what the original question was. Sorry, I, I just started talking. <laughs> you just and, started and talking about. Fun. I'm sorry. No, what, I, no. I mean, and I went to play it, but the music was way too loud, and it just like overshadowed oh. you, and I couldn't adjust it, so I just stopped. Sorry, that's okay. Oh, the, the, um, I mean, it's be, it's it's uh, not even early access, dude. Settings. It's it's basically a demo, <laughs> so it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, so is that the is that your plan? Is is to go once it's it's solid and stable, and and you know the 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 big bugs are worked out to go in, go early access and then go full launch. Uh, we aren't planning on doing early access. Um, our goal with this project is to get a product <coughs> out. That is um, like a, get a commercial product out. That is our <coughs> main goal. Mm. Um, you okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, th yeah, that is our main goal it is to get, get a commercial product out. And um, we don't want to mess around with early access or too many um, extra things. Our, the, the main primary goal is to have a fun game that's playable, that has a price tag on it that people can buy and, you know... Get it out so you can do the next the thing. get experience with that process. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, sorry, one second. That's okay. I got a phone call from my brother, too, which and he never, ever calls me. <laughs> he just called me to uh, tell me my plywood was here. I I, us, I usually Sorry, get a message from. I, uh, I normally always mute these, and I completely forgot. Sorry, that's it's, it's okay. Now. No, it's all good. It's it's, it's I, I get a message from one of my clients. It's like literally the minute we go live every oh, single week. Every I'm single like, time. Are you watching? Some can see yeah. when we go live. Yeah. So <laughs> when you were, I, I want to talk a little bit about the platforms and research and all that kind of good stuff why steam and have you looked at going to other platforms is there reasons why you didn't do other platforms let's let's talk about that real quick 
Um, so, uh, what other platforms we're going to be going to and uh, why we... All right. So, um, our goal is to focus on Steam for this launch. And because um, we we don't want to try and bite off more than we can chew, but we are going to be uh, releasing on itch.io and Game Jolt as well, um, just because it's relatively easy to get set up on those stores. Um, we have heard that uh, other platforms like the Nintendo Switch are good for indies right now, but um, that is a little bit too far out of what we're currently um, aiming for. Uh, so. We've also heard that uh, with the Nintendo Switch, um, they're looking for people that have existing products already. So uh, because this is our first commercial product, we don't know what our chances would be like. So uh, we don't want to worry about that too much right now. So no plans for, for mobile or anything like that? Um, no, we're not planning on going to mobile, at least not right now. Um, we have had several people say that this would be a good mobile game, and we do want to go there eventually, but it requires additional hardware in order to be able to do that. Like we would need a um, we would need a build server just for making uh, like a, a Mac version, for example, and we would need uh, like testing hardware for Android and whatnot. And uh, this is all extra cost that we don't want to invest at the moment. We, we eventually and, we do want to do that though so android is interesting in particular i mean one it is a challenge for a lot of indie devs because there's an awful lot of hardware that you have to test on and, and realistically you're not going to hit all of them you know the other side of it is especially for a premium game the piracy rates on Android are just absolutely out of this world. And so yeah, I, yeah. It, unless you've got like you're running it free to play or you have an awful lot of, you know, in-app purchases along the way, it's I'm, as much as I love Android and, and I do the majority of my late evening gaming on a 15 inch Android Chromebook touchscreen which i absolutely love but you know it's it is it's, it's a challenging platform for a lot of indie devs because of the sheer amount of testing that you have to do and then the amount of piracy that you're going to get on the back end so a lot of times it ends up being just flat out you know not worth it um and in terms of you know looking at where fruit collar is going to fall in in the space in the industry i mean where what did you look at or did you just be honest if you didn't it's fine it, when you were looking at comparable titles and you know you're marketing you know planning out marketing for the game what did you look at you know where do you think it's going to fall in there you know what sort of research if any did you do on on that side of the ball when we started we didn't do any research at all um we just we decided okay we, we need a project which is small enough for us to complete and uh, we need to complete it within a short amount of time uh so this game has been in development uh since february of last year i believe so um it's only been in development for about a uh, little less than a year and a half and um we didn't do any market research at all because our, our goal was to have something which was um, that we could complete in a short amount of time and we were passionate about completing. And um, yeah, but n now that the game is mostly done, we have been doing some market research, um, especially now that it's confirmed that we're on Steam because um, for a, a, like it, it took us a while to get set up on Steam at all. Uh, so hey, wait, wait, hold on. Now let's start there. Because oh, I mean, okay. th these are, because uh, uh, I don't want to gloss over anything because these are issues that, you know, mm -hmm. any company that, that's doing their first Steam launch, you know, could feasibly run into. So why did it take you a long time to get set up on Steam? What what, what ran so, sideways there? Uh, well, because um, Steam require, or uh, Valve, I guess, requires um, a bunch of, um, stuff set up which if you're already a if you're already an established company um you have that already 
um like and uh if you're not a um if, if you're not not a partnership or an llc then it's probably um less of a headache as well but because uh there's three of us um in a in a, a llc that added uh, some some additional complications so um i'm not entirely sure uh well the, the that's it, interesting it requires it seems like if you had documents. an llc or you were actually an incorporated company it would be yeah. easier but uh, we weren't so um oh, oh, you weren't. that oh, whole okay. process you... yeah so need, needing to go through that whole process get everything set up to run as a business that took a like a long time um well i mean like it, it took like six months um so that is oh, one wait, thing so i do want to say to that if an anyone LLC wants to yeah, so uh, why, why did it take six months? Uh, we had to work with a lawyer to get a um, an operating agreement written up, and um, we also had to just like do a bunch of research into how to set it up first. And um, can, can yeah. I give you a piece of advice that's like, you know, at this point, nine months overdue? <laughs> sure. Use legal Zoom. Uh, I've, I've heard things about legals. So, um, mm, I, I have heard from some lawyers that they uh, that they joke about legals. Actually, I, I don't think I can say anything about that, but um, we didn't want to go that route. Yeah. So we, we didn't want to go that route. One, you're always going to hear from an attorney that not to use legal Zoom because yeah, this is true. That's their job. But two, if you're you, there is a there is a, a bit of truth in that. If you're doing something out of the ordinary complex, yeah, you don't want to go that route. You know, for setting up, you know, a development company or, I mean, that's what we use to set up the Powell Group eight years ago or whatever, and it it was super easy. And I think it cost like 600 bucks or something like that. It wasn't ridiculously expensive. And it basically took care of everything for you and you didn't really have to think about it. Um, yeah. It's, it's, I recommend it if you're doing something that's fairly straightforward. If you, the more complexity you add to the situation, the more less likely it is that that's what you need to do. But all right, so anyway, so it took a while dealing with lawyers and, and getting operating agreements and, and all of that sort of stuff to get the actual LLC set up, which was mm -hmm. delaying getting your actual Steam account set up that that is correct yeah um and then like uh the, there's delays um and because a, a lot of this stuff is processed by actual people at valve so there's delays involved in that too um so uh once we got all the lc stuff set up then like we, we had to wait for all this stuff to be reviewed by actual people at valve and approved and whatnot and um i i, I do want to say also that uh when you when you finally get in um like it is a little overwhelming when you first like see like the like the control panel for this thing it's like oh good heavens what have what am i going to do now <laughs> because it is so complex but um actually what is really cool is that they have uh, a a youtube channel with um very helpful uh, very helpful tutorials on how to navigate this whole system. So if you are getting set up on this, check out, I think it's the Steamworks YouTube channel that they have it linked in their documentation all over the place. So, um, and in fact, you could even do that like before, cause it's, it's all public. Even All their documentation for Steam is all public and like the youtube channel tutorials it's all public information so you, before you get set up on steam like if you want to know what you're getting into you can go there and read through the stuff before you even get all this set up so um that might be helpful i kind of kind of wish i did that um i kind of wish i knew i didn't know the stuff was available so steam's and back end looks, like <laughs> looks like 90s era software <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so uh, once you had the steam page set up then you know mm -hmm. where what sort of all right so getting back to the original question that we already branched off of so you said you started doing research once you got the steam page set up mm -hmm. yeah um we did re so so we've been doing research recently uh something we've been doing um 
like not specifically for fruit crawler but as general uh market awareness for steam is every night we sit down um as a family because it's, it's a it's a family company um we, we sit down as a family and we go through every single new release that came out that day and we watch the trailer go through the game page we talk about the game and stuff so that we're aware of what the store page is looking like on a daily basis and uh, what sort of um environment our game is going to be releasing into uh, an another cool thing you can do with this is oh did my computer shut down? No, you're still here. No, you're good. Don't do that. All right, good. I think the monitors just decided that I hadn't been moving the mouse recently enough. All right, so um, what was I? Oh, yeah, so you can actually go through the upcoming uh, Steam releases page. Like, once you have your Steam page up as a coming soon page, uh, which Valve requires you to do for a certain amount of time before you can actually publish. Um, so you, you have to keep that in mind as well. But you can go through the upcoming releases and figure out what other games are releasing around yours and actually um, have a rough idea of what that week is gonna look like as far as um, releases around your own release and that entire month if you want. Um, so that's something we've been doing as well. Uh, as far as specific, oh, sorry, go ahead. So going through each night and looking at what released that day, you could spend an entire day doing that. How, I mean, given how many games launch on Steam, how do you chop that up into a meeting friendly time slot? So we, um, we apply some filters to it. We only count games that are in English um, because we don't speak other, other languages and that seems like a good, like, quick filter. We also uh, only filter for Windows releases because we are only releasing for Windows right now. And um, I have noticed that unchecking those, don't the, that doesn't actually remove very many games. Uh, the, um, the one that does remove a lot of stuff is uh, telling it that you specifically only want games, no DLC or um, it, it, like uh, soundtracks or anything like that. Uh, so we also filter for games only. And if you're um, doing that, there's actually not that many releases. Um, we've noticed that there's like m maybe you get uh, two pages worth of stuff, but it's really not that bad. And um, something that we have also noticed is a lot of these games are released by accident. They you can't actually buy the game. It, it's it's popped up in the new releases section, and you go and you go go down to the buy section. It just says coming soon. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of these games, the developers um, forgot that they had the release date set and Steam automatically published it. And this happens a lot. It's like accounts for like on a bad day, about half of the releases. Really? Um, so it, wow. yes, I am. Sh I was shocked. All right, but how um, is that actually an accident? Or if well, I don't you know. tell it, it to gaming, release I don't know. today and then yeah. you change it, and tell it to release in two weeks. Do you pop up on the new and noteworthy page both times? Uh, that is something I'm not sure of. I've been trying to keep track of games, um, like looking for that specifically. I don't think I've seen duplicates yet, but um, yeah, that's some, something I'm looking for. And if you guys uh, start doing this yourself, that would be something you should look for as well. Uh, I don't know if it republishes your game. I would imagine that once Steam has automatically marked your game as available, I would imagine that um, th they wouldn't do that again. Uh, I don't see why they would allow that, but it's possible. I don't know. I, I, I haven't. I seen don't it yet. know that that happens either. And yeah, if anybody's watching and actually knows this, let me know. But I want to say I, I did read something about that at one point in time. How developers were gaming the system by constantly saying that they the game was releasing uh, that yes may, that may not be the case but that is a very specific exploit that is um and uh, as far as i know valve hasn't found a way to fix this yet but um that is for the uh the new or what was it the popular upcoming list specifically so these uh, for that to work you can't let steam automatically publish your game uh this is to keep your game at the top of the popular upcoming list um and uh, you, you do that by saying your release date to be soon and then before steam automatically releases it you you set it like back a bit and then you just just keep pushing it back and back and back and that keeps you like as long as you have the wish the wish lists to 
um, to keep you at the top of that popular list, you can stay there indefinitely. But this is definitely not um, something that uh, I, I don't think Valve is happy about uh, people doing this, though. So j just want to be clear about that. I do not recommend anyone actually do this. But that is my understanding of the exploit. I don't think it works if you let Steam release your page like these games have had. Well, okay, so once it's automatically released, yeah. it's, you know, the horse is out of the barn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I never understood that, that, that phrase anyway. It's like, yes, you can always get the horse back in the barn because that's where the horse goes. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the... Oh, oh go, go ahead. All right, so, so you're seeing... So how many games, when you go through and you do your filters every night, how many games are you seeing a day? Less than 20, um, less than 50? Yeah, I, I'd say less than 20 games. Because um, we usually, it, because uh, like th this normally happens late at night because that's when everyone has time for it. And um, like people actually start falling, like, like <laughs> people start falling asleep near the end of it. But it normally doesn't last more than 30 minutes. It's like a half hour, maybe an hour. Um, venture and looking through these games so um it doesn't take that long um so yeah I, I imagine it's less than 20. i need to start taking stats of that now that you mention it i'm gonna have to start making a note of how many games we went through so our friend bjorn over at uh, game dev company yeah, he used to do a stream like i guess i think it was on wednesdays actually where he would just he would go through live on Steam the all the listings of what's being released and the coming sooner and all that sort of stuff and, and comment on it. What sort of stuff have you learned from looking at other people's launch pages? And have you been able to correlate any best practices to you know what you're seeing in terms of sales? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, we have noticed that. Um... Oh wow! Uh, so we have noticed that um, I I'm I believe that a lot of people are underpricing their game, but um, again, we haven't released a commercial product on there yet, so I can't say that as a like a uh, a full-on statement, like a, an it, as an experience statement, because I don't know. I haven't put our game up there, but we do see a lot of low low-priced games, and um, one one thing that we say a lot is, well, uh, this game could have sold for more i would buy it for more than they're charging uh that's one thing that we notice a lot and um another thing that we notice is that that there are um that there are some games that really do well and uh like on their first day so, so the uh, a heuristic that we use as a rule of thumb is um and i believe we got the heuristic from Jake Burkett. I don't know if it was his heuristic or not, but it's like you get about 40 or 50 uh, units sold per review, which when you're dealing with low review numbers, I imagine that's not um, very accurate, but we use it as a heuristic to get an idea of like how well these games are selling their first, uh, first day on Steam. And uh, some games actually do quite well. We've noticed that... that the really, uh, like, really dark games sell good. And also, like, the opposite end of the spectrum also sells well. Like, real quirky games also sell really well. Um, like, from, from what we've been able to estimate based on uh, our limited run through this. So, uh, that was really interesting. Have you looked at uh, Steam Spy in terms of, you know, mm -hmm. correlating what you're seeing to, to actual sales? Um, yeah, so uh, Steam Spy is um, not as accurate as it used to be once uh, Valve, um, so, so Valve went through and they made it so that uh, profile information is um, private by default and that completely like messed with Steam Spy's algorithm. And um, we, we did subscribe to them, uh, to, to their Patreon to get some, excuse me, some more in-depth statistics. Uh, for the next project we're working on, which, by the way, for our next project, we are doing marketing first or <laughs> marketing <laughs> research first. So that's been fun. And that's also why we got the same. So I, at any rate, that's uh, un unannounced. I, I don't have much I can talk about that right now. But um, we uh, 
the stats on Steam Spy are definitely not as like anywhere close as accurate as they used to be, unfortunately. As far as I know, the developer is working on trying to improve that. But um, the last time I checked, uh, it it's still at the um, r relatively inaccurate uh, value. So. Yeah, uh, a site, you do, uh, I, I want to keep in mind quick. that you know that developer is also oh. running the <laughs> Epic Game Store too. So uh. yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. Um, I yeah, that that's that's interesting. I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, I do want to say there's another site uh, called Steam DB, which is actually very valuable. Um, you can actually get a list of like package information and stuff and um like uh online players and it, it's like information you could probably find through the steam website but um it, it's in a bit of an easier oh there goes my monitors again it's a bit of, it's in an easier to digest pack or you know format what, um, what's that website steam, steam db, DB. I went to steamdb.com and it just uh, it's dot info webpage. sorry i probably should have mentioned that steamdb.info ah there we go and uh, we use this uh, quite a lot for um, market research on the new project. So it, it's very useful. And I also use it like when I was figuring out figuring out how to set up uh, the store page for Fruit Crawler. I actually went through some <laughs> games on here to try and figure out, OK, so how did how did they solve this problem? And um, so it's useful for that as well, because you can actually get information on like the depots and the packages and stuff, which is all um, publicly queryable and normally not visible through the Steam store, but Steam DB makes it available, um, which as far as I know is okay because Valve has notice about it and you know that they haven't been taken down. So uh, as far as I know, it's okay. I, I'll admit, I did not know about this site and it's very, it's very interesting. I ran interesting. into it by complete accident and I'm glad I did because it has been very useful. Like even the first page, it shows you like the active players last seven days and stuff and uh, you could get a lot of information from this website. It'll tell you what's top on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it also tra like um, if you go to a games page, it'll actually tell you like a I, was it this or I, I think it was Steam DB. I, I think Steam Spy also does this, but um, Steam DB will actually show you like views on YouTube and Twitch. Like it, it's really cool. It'll give you a graph over time of that as well. Which for the smaller games, it, I I suspect it's not that accurate, but for any uh, medium sized game, it's it's very valuable and uh, looks fairly accurate as well. So. All right, so let's look at you know marketing in general for because I, I do want to come back i think we could talk a whole lot about the steam db thing uh but <laughs> the all right so as you're moving towards launch which you're like what two months away from launch on yeah, about two months yeah okay so what's your marketing plan uh, marketing plan is uh, we're going to be releasing weekly dev logs. We released the first one um, last, uh, actually only a couple days ago, I think. Uh, we're going to be releasing regular dev logs in uh, text and video form. Um, the, and we're going to be putting a big emphasis on video. Uh, we've spent like several years learning video production and um and like uh, audio and all that stuff so that we can do this for marketing purposes so we want to make uh, take full advantage of that especially because a lot of platforms and this is really cool i i like as a consumer i love this and like uh, as a uh as, as a professional game developer i love this a lot of platforms are putting a bigger emphasis on video like reddit has video now i that that's cool and facebook and um like uh uh twit twitter has video as well you don't have to just do gifs now like video is everywhere so we're putting a big emphasis on video because i i believe that is the best way to like show your game because a picture speaks a thousand words and i i do believe that a video multiplies that um, even more because people actually get to see how your game plays and it's catchy because you, you're scrolling through a long feed you see some animation that looks cool so you, you probably want to start your video with something eye-catching you see something that looks cool and you're like oh what is that and you watch through it, and then you might check out the game um, but we're putting a big emphasis on video and um, we're gonna be doing the weekly devlogs uh, beyond that we're not pushing marketing a huge amount um i uh have never written a press release before but i'm considering um doing press release through games press which is a scary thought because i've never done that before but we'll have to see how that goes um 
and uh but as far as like streamer outreach uh like contacting press sites directly um i don't think we want to tackle that for this particular project because uh, again um just releasing on steam and like doing the marketing we're already doing is also is already quite uh, a lot of effort i haven't actually touched code in fruit crawler for about a week because i've been spending my whole time just getting everything set up like just basic stuff get, getting the devlog uh written and the video made the video alone took like three days of work uh which is going to be less for future projects so a, a lot of that was uh, initial setup we had to get workflows um like round tripping between premiere and um davinci resolve like we, that was a nightmare and getting it to work with reaper and whatnot um but at, at any rate i'll be happy to work on the code again I don't want to bite off too much marketing at the moment because uh, I don't want the game itself to suffer. And I still have to be an active developer on the actual code. Which gets you into a very dicey spot. If, yeah. It, because it doesn't matter how good the game is. If you don't market it, you're going to suffer in sales. Whereas yeah, at the same yeah, time, if you spend a lot of time marketing and the game, you know, is buggy or sucks, you know, oh, then... Dad. It's the same thing. So yeah, I'm gonna ask a, a brutal question here. Is this a game, because you've already got, you're already thinking about the next one. Is this a game that you are looking to make it a financial success in terms of it's going to, you know, recoup a year and a half of development time? Mm. Uh, well, I will say that this is a discussion that uh, we have been having internally for a, a while, and uh, we have numbers that we um, expect to hit, and we know what numbers uh, we would have to hit in order to recoup our costs. Um, we like know how much was invested and whatnot. Um, Given that this is our first commercial release, and we um, used to have a, a, a you know an okay sized community uh, from the online games, but it's been a while since we've released a project, and um, that community, some of the people are still around. By the way, if you're watching, hi. Um, <laughs> some of them are still around, but it has shrunk dramatically, and uh, so I do not think that this is going to recoup a year and a half worth of work unfortunately um we, we are planning on um trying to increase the value of fruit crawler by doing additional uh releases over time like uh dlc um specifically probably level packs um like seasonally themed or something like the halloween level pack i, I think would be cool you, you're running around as the fruit crawler and those jack-o-lanterns and like gravestones and like spooky but kind of cute ghosts go Ooh, yeah, I think that would be cool. We're planning on doing that to try and get some more value out of Fruit Crawler because uh, the levels are relatively easy to make. The real problem is the mechanics, like the, the tail mechanics and whatnot. That's where we invest a lot of our time. So um, that is our plan going forward. To answer your main question, though, uh, we are expecting to get something, but it's not going to be a year and a half worth of work, and we're fine with that. Our goal, we want to be able to release a bunch of, um, of uh, fun games like in this casual genre um, in order to eventually recoup investment over the long haul and uh, building a community during that time. Um, so we're not expecting to get back our investment for a little bit. And we are okay with that. We're planning everything around that. But I mean, yeah, because a year and a half to spend on a game, on a, on a puzzle game with, 40 some levels that's a long time that, yeah, that's a it is. that's a long dev cycle so looking at i mean for, for in terms you're going to continue to drive sales and drive eyeballs if you've got content packs coming out fairly regularly mm -hmm. how will the development of those content packs affect the development of your next game so um one of the things that took a long time with fruit crawler was getting infrastructure like get, getting stuff in place to be able to actually make the game um creating a, an engine in unity because you, you still have to do that even though you use a, a 
an off the shelf engine, you still have to create like a game specific engine or like common utilities that the engine doesn't have. So a lot of that time was spent building these things up. And um, like something that took a long time also was uh, our entire um, uh, build and deployment process is all automated. Uh, so we like um, we make a commit and then like the system just creates the builds for different sites, creates different configurations of them all automatically and deploys it to, to the stores all on its own. So we don't have to worry about that. That system took forever to make, by the way. Um, we, we like invested four months of, of engineering time into that system, but we won't have to do that for the next project because it already exists. So we anticipate the future projects to take less time. The DLC will definitely take less time because the tools, which is all the DLC will need, the tools are already done. Um, so we don't think the next DLC is going to take a year and a half. That's good. So when are you going to start the next the next game? Though? Uh, we almost have a prototype for it finished at the moment. Um, my brother, who uh, Jake, he does the... Uh, the design work for most of our projects. Um, he has been working on the uh, the prototype for our next project, um, like while working on Fruit Crawler, and um, it's looking good. Uh, it's not completely finished yet. We want to focus on getting the Steam store page up um, as soon as possible with the next project, because that is one thing that we also noticed is that. Um, and you hear this advice a lot, is you want to get your Steam store page up as soon as possible because wish lists matter. And I think that um, it's going to help a lot having the Steam store page up and being able to accumulate traffic and people interested in the project um, over more than just a couple months, which is all we have for Fruit Crawler. Um, so that is one of our big focuses on the next project. We want to make sure that the Steam store page is up a lot sooner. So what have you been doing to drive traffic to, I mean, because we, we constantly hear that you got to get people to wish list, you got to get people to wish list, you got to yeah. get people to wish list. What have you been doing to drive traffic to that Steam page? Uh, right now, we have just been doing basic like uh, posts on Facebook and Twitter, which um, in the case of Facebook, we have uh, 97, I think, followers. So we're not getting a huge amount of traffic from Facebook and uh, Twitter alone. But posting in um, like there's the indie game promo group. Um, they allow you to post, I think, once every two weeks your game. And because it's a group dedicated just to promoing a, like indie games, and they also uh, moderate it. Oh, there goes my monitor again. I'm going to have to turn that off the next time I do this. All right. Um, because it's dedicated to promoting indie games, like the people that are in there are there to promote their own games, but also there's people that are there that are genuinely interested in finding about finding out about new indie games. Like, um, I find out about a bunch of cool projects by being part of that group. It's the Indie Game Promo on Facebook. So um, we actually got some traction from that, so that was really cool. Uh, we plan on posting in there regularly every two weeks, or I'm going to have to double-check the rule. I'm pretty sure it's two weeks. Also, um, Screenshot Saturday, we have wanted to post in that, and we have for previous projects. For the uh, one of the online RPGs we did, we posted in Screenshot Saturday, and people, like, we, we got traffic from that as well. Screenshot Saturday in... Um, I forget the Facebook, the game indie game developers, I think, on Facebook. Also, Reddit, uh, Reddit slash r slash game dev does a weekly screenshot Saturday where um, people post their works in progress. And if you do that regularly and you interact with the other people that are in there and check out their stuff and whatnot, you actually get people checking out your stuff. And you do like over time, because this, this doesn't happen overnight, but over time you do get more people looking at the game and uh, being interested in it. This is experience from previous projects, not Fruit Crawl, but we do plan on doing that for this one. So when you... So you, you, you mentioned that video was a big part of it, but you didn't mention yeah. any Twitch or video in driving traffic to that page. Are you, you know, with your dev logs and things like that, are you, are you going to stream those on, on Twitch or, you know, I, I'm, I'm very interested, you know, one, because I'm always looking for new ways to promote this show, <laughs> how the video is play how you're using video on on twitter and some of these other platforms because that's one of the things that i haven't had time to sit down and do either 
<laughs> um, just just posting them uh, along like in the appropriate group and just on our official page, uh, you know, sharing. So um, I, I recommend sharing uh, from your Facebook page to a an appropriate group because it'll have a reference back to your Facebook page. And uh, this isn't spammy. This is actually helpful. I have um, been a little annoyed sometimes when people haven't done this in different groups I'm in because then I have to go trying to figure out like where their game is. Like I thought oh, that's cool, but I can't find it. So um, definitely like reshare from your page um, and just, you know, common sense, don't, don't spam, like follow group rules and whatnot, but um, share from your page. As far as video specifically, um, yeah, we're, we've just been doing it directly like that. We've been posting on, oh, um, I, I almost forgot. Uh, another good site for this is, um, uh, indie, did I say IndieDB or IndieDB is another really great site for this. And um, like our devlog, devlog one was put up on their front page, and that's not uncommon. Um, as long as you have something of substance, your uh, news posts, which could be devlogs, can go up on the front page of IndieDB, um, and you do get traffic from that. Um, and uh you mentioned streaming and twitch we do want to stream and we have streamed in the past for one of our online game projects we streamed for eight to ten hours a day that was that oh was my an experience. God. eight to ten hours a day of game development and it, this was really cool so i do recommend if you have a multiplayer game of any kind um to live stream on like Twitch and uh, like interact with the viewers and stuff because uh, it's really fun to be playing a uh, uh, an online game and watching it being made and seeing updates come out. Like you're watching the Twitch stream and then you're also playing the game and you're in the like in the game and then you see yourself in the Twitch stream. It, it's re really cool to do that. So if any of you have a multiplayer game, like. Um, uh, I, I recommend trying out Twitch streaming the game development of it because uh, it is quite fun for players and um, it's uh, like it gives you traction. That's and what also people like, enjoy. Like, lets community people feel invested in yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. It feels like exactly because you know, it's awesome to be involved in a game and feel like that you're part of it. You know what I mean? And that you know the developer. Mm -hmm. That's what's yeah, awesome exactly. about uh, Tobor Prime's game too. <laughs> I know the developer. <laughs> oh, cool. You should also, Michael, check out our friends over at IGDB. If you don't have, I don't, it doesn't look like you've got a page up over there, but putting one up there automatically gives you a, a, a press kit and all that kind of fun stuff too. They, they have a placeholder page for you because I cool. guess you're on Steam, but you don't have an actual page yet. But yeah, I would highly recommend IGDB too. Okay, cool. Hey, thanks for the uh, thanks for the suggestion. I will bookmark this so I can find it later. Um, uh, r r related to streaming, uh, we've also um, heard that streaming on your uh, on your Steam page is um, useful as well. So uh, we are going to be experimenting th with that if if we get the time. Because I mean, r right now it's it's like we're juggling a million things, but we do plan on streaming on Twitch and the Steam page and using Restream in order to do that. So. Um, yeah, that is how we're handling uh, the video and the and the streaming. It is, I mean, it is a lot to handle, especially for a small company. I mean, it's, I've learned that the hard way too, you know, trying to run our consulting company and at the same time, you know, do promotions for this show and, and try to spread the word about what we're doing here. And it, it's a lot more work than you anticipated being. And it can mm -hmm. easily get overwhelming it's like okay do i need to launch this video on you know to host it on youtube or twitch and then where do i share it and th there's a lot of stuff that goes into it that a lot of people just don't think about at first and it is overwhelming which is why we like having these conversations it's because okay what's working and what's not working i mean we we um the the folks over at fail better used our show for their steam page and i know hannah was looking for other people to keep going as well and i've heard obviously we don't release games so it's not like we can test it on our steam page but we've heard that you know having that stream going on on your steam page helps and it would make sense in the fact that you know we talked about this a couple of episodes ago where 
platform holders always want to profile the things that are using the new cool stuff you know whether that's yes, exactly. microsoft or apple or whatever and so if you are streaming on your steam page chances are somewhere in their algorithm you're going to get bumped up some list because you are actually embracing and using their newest feature yeah and that is one thing that I can say from, uh, again, we haven't released like fully on Steam yet, but experience with Steam and other platforms that we have released on in the you know 19 years that we've been making games is uh, try and like fill out everything, like make use of all the features that make sense um, in a particular store page. Um, like for instance, we um, we have a giant bomb uh, wiki page set up for Fruit Crawler, and I'm I'm putting a lot of effort into trying to get that looking nice and stuff, which is kind of difficult because when you first um, when you first create an account on Giant Bomb, uh, they limit the edits you can make, which like makes sense. They limit the edits you can make um, until you've made a bunch of them, and they have to go to moderation and stuff. So it takes a, a while to get anything up on uh, on there. But yeah, and like, you can't you even you can't sure copy you and this. paste stuff from your store page. You have to write exactly. fresh new content. But the good news is yep. that that puts it on Twitch. So puts it in the yep. Twitch database. And I will say, uh, regarding the streaming again, um, and Steam, like, helping to promote it, um, Steam does promote, let's see, where was it? Steam promotes live streams um, in the different categories, like uh, casual right now, um, the casual category, browsing casual on Steam down here, the game streaming right now, you know, Boss Guard with 11, 11 viewers. I mean, your stream could wind up down there. So um, I, I do think it's it's valuable. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to jump back real quick uh, uh, to the, the marketing for Fruit Crawlers. So we are putting some effort into that. Um, what I'm focusing on right now, in fact, I was uh, like, I'm currently in the process of doing this, um, going through all of the games in a, a particular set of tags on Steam, figuring out which ones are like, which ones share an audience with Fruit Crawler, making a complete list of them, and then just going through the store pages, figuring out what people liked about the games, what people disliked about the games. I think that one's really important and figure out like how maybe we could make it so that we don't have that sort of a negative reaction for our game. Um, or maybe we spot something that people really liked that might be valuable for our game to have as well. Also like, um, I would also recommend once you have this list put together, it might be valuable to figure out like where people are talking about those games at. So then you can figure out where your where your potential audience is. Like, don't go spamming. Like, no, no one wants spammers. But just to be aware of um, like where your audience is talking about games like yours, and um, then maybe you could do something with that information. Have you looked at, you know, when it comes to doing a lot of that, that data entry and research work, have you looked at using something like Fiverr to find somebody to cheaply do that for you? And then you can analyze the results, but you don't have to take time out of your day to actually go dig it all up. That is a very good idea. I had not considered that at all. Um, cause I, my one concern with, um, with uh, Fiverr would be, you know, like a quality control issue, but if you're going through it yourself anyways, afterwards, it probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be a problem. And that's a very good idea. I will have to think about that some more. Thank you. I, I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's just, you know, when it comes to, I call it grunt work because it is, and again, we all have to sit down and do it, but you know, as companies grow and your responsibilities grow, you hit the point when you have to step back and say, okay, is it really worth my time to be doing this right now? Or is there something else I can focus on that's gonna have a better yield? And a lot of data entry stuff like that. I mean, Indy and I both use Fiverr for basic research and, and data entry type stuff. Um, yeah. And it, it does, it saves a lot of time and you can go on and be focused on, you know, some of the more, important things that are popping up yeah and we, we've actually been looking at fiverr um in more depth recently there was a uh what really got me interested in it because um samurai guitarist on uh youtube made a video recently where he hired fiverr musicians to uh create uh vocals and um uh like um 
dr drums and accompaniment for a uh, guitar, a set of guitar chords that he made. And the result was actually not bad. He had to take all the pieces together. He had to do the mixing himself and, you know, and, and everything. Um, but without any direction at all, he got some pretty decent results for like, honestly, not too much expense. So um, we have seriously been looking at Fiverr for uh, for potential work in the future. Um, that data entry is something I hadn't considered though. That That is a really good idea and we'll have to look at that some. And now I completely forgot my next question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love me some good fiber. I mean, it is. It, I mean, it's it's extremely helpful, and and yeah, it does. It, it lets you keep focusing on the things that you that you know, make a difference to you all. So, you mentioned price point earlier, and how a lot of developers undervalue their game, and yeah we here wholeheartedly agree on that so what is what price point are you aiming for with fruit crawler um so i can't give specifics but it's um in the range of 15 to 20 dollars ish um, and the game is going to be expanded more from what you're saying here um it, it's our target price point is in that range and we're going to have a launch discount of like 10 or 15 percent so i'm glad to hear that it's it's i'm with you we look at this stuff and it's like i don't ever see the point in launching a game that you are expecting to make money on let me put that big asterisk out there if it's a side project if it's a hobby if it's whatever that you're not looking at in terms of commercial success then you know please do do whatever you want but for something that you're looking to actually generate revenue on it needs to be 15 dollars minimum yeah and yeah, you know, I, I the agree. advice that I got years ago uh, from a very good friend of mine, and, and it still rings true no matter what we do every day, is you can always lower the price of something. You can yeah. never raise it. Yeah, people are going to be mad if you do that, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, can't do that. So, I mean, yeah, if, if you launch in, in that, and I think you're in the right spot, you know, 15, 20 bucks. You know, look at it and say, okay, we're going to do it for nineteen ninety nine, but it's it's fifteen at launch or something like that. You know, that's that's in the realm of good pricing, so to speak. Um, so another question I had: are the you're going to launch on Steam and Itch and Game Jolt? Yes. Are there other you know sites along the lines of Itch and Game Jolt that you looked at and you decided not to, or? You know, are those the, the biggest ones, you know, that make I mean, sense for you all? Or, or how did you how did you come to that list? Uh, so those are the ones that you can uh, get into besides Steam anyways. Well, I guess Steam now requires the um, the app payment in order to get in. But um, those are the ones that you can get in with relatively low curation. So those are the ones that we're sure that we can get into. Um, I would love to be in the humble bundle store. I mean, that, that, that would be awesome. Uh, we would love to be in uh, good old games, but um, the good old games specifically is uh, highly curated. So yes, um, yeah, so we, we like, especially a game like Fruit Crawler, I don't know if that's the type of game they're looking for even. So that is why we, how we aren't saying we're launching on any of those other platforms and why I'm not really focusing on them too much. Because again, the whole goal of this is we need the experience. We, we need to know like all the steps in this process and the experience we're gonna get from releasing a commercial product, regardless of how much money we get back from it, that experience of the entire process is what we're really aiming for here. And that way we can go into the next project uh, more informed and we'll be able to do more with it. So what do you feel is, are the unique selling points, not the features, but the unique selling points of Fruit Crawler? Mm, uh, unique selling points. Um, I'm going to say that it, it's, um, and I was talking with our um, alpha testers about this as well, because it's you know something I've, I'm concerned with. Um, I, I think that one of our unique selling points is that the uh, we have a worm type game, right? That has the physics based system, but also there are multiple different ways, right? To complete a level. Uh, you can like with the scoring system, you can get a variety of different uh, scores at the end of a level. 
uh, based on how well you did or like using different techniques even. Like um, there's a level where like you have to know that you can eat a fruit, but then also backtrack out before the tailpiece pops pops in. And by doing that, you can get a better score on the level. And um, being like having that in the game, I think is a uh, is is a unique selling point for the project. Um, like you, you see these things in other games as well, but I think our particular combination of them is unique. And uh, we are we are uh, planning on expanding the level system so that uh, there's actually a level selection um, area, and uh, you actually get scored based on like how many points you made in that level based on how many you could possibly make if you knew all the like cool tricks and whatnot. So um, yeah, I, th that's the one thing that pops out to me immediately. Um, another thing is just, you know, it's like, a, it's a fun game and our, our goal is, uh, so, so sorry, I don't mean fun. That's kind of subjective. Um, our, our game fun. is, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, who, who would say that? Um, our game <laughs> is, uh, is like happy, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, which uh, I think is a like could be considered a unique selling point. There are a lot of dark games on Steam, and we're aiming for something that's a little bit more you know cheerful and joyful. But you just said that the dark games sell better. We have yes, the yeah, and you you are absolutely right. If you're going in there completely for money, like make, make a dark game, and you might you, you might be doing okay as long as the gameplay is fine. Um, we have also noticed, though, that it's not just the dark games. It's also the quirky ones. Quirky ones do real well. There was a game that came out recently. Oh, what was it? it um, you had these big googly eyes, and you're bouncing around, and you had to bounce between different platforms and whatnot. And, and you, your character was, like, in a straight jacket. It was, like, super, super goofy and quirky. I don't remember the name of the project, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but it sold, like, it sold really well. And uh, we've seen other games that are quirky like that, that also, you know, sell, sell well. So um, I think that our game has enough quirkiness in it to where we might not be on that, uh, that far extreme, but I think the Steam audience will still enjoy it. There, there's a lot to be said for finding a good niche and doing it well. <laughs> yeah. You know, because the, if I look back at the, games that I've been a part of over the last 20 years, you know, the ones that have a good niche are the ones that by and large end up doing a little better. Uh, I, I remember when we first started working with Paradox and, you know, I played the original Europa Universalis and I'm like, oh my God, this game is amazing. And, you know, there were so many people that were like, nobody's, nobody's, there's like 15 people in the world that are going to play that game. And it's like, no, there's not. That's your assumption based on your own preferences for what you like to play and what you don't like to play. But there's a lot of people who do love this. And because there aren't a lot of options, a quality offering in a niche is going to yield better results. And you can charge a little more for a niche title that's well done because those players are hungry for that type of game and they're willing to pay a little more. So, yeah. you know, there's a, a definite advantage to being a little different or, or going for, you know, that niche crowd. And that's one of my, you know, when I do the judging for Indie Prize, one of my most frequent comments, you know, is there's just nothing unique in this game. There's nothing that, you know, makes me want to say, okay, I'm going to play this rather than, you know, XYZ or what, what other game is similar to it. You know, I think that there's oftentimes just not enough research done on the front end to, you know, by developers to make sure that they've got something that is good, but that is also different enough that it's going to make a difference. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I, I've seen some absolutely fantastic, gorgeous match three games, but you have to do more than just have a match three game. There has to be more stuff in it. Yeah. There has to be you I've know, seen something some cool in things. there unique. Yeah. I have seen some cool things with match three uh, as well. You know, some people like 
turn it into a combat system and stuff and i think yeah. that's super cool you know um and, and like uh, re regarding fruit crawler i we didn't do the market research uh, in advance which um if your goal is to just get it out there uh, um i i think it's fine because we we did that but um it i do recommend like if you can to do your market research first before you start working on the game um i think we lucked out with fruit crawler specifically because um in the market research i have been doing there isn't it there isn't another game like this on the steam store with this particular combination of mechanics and stuff like the 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 uh, a physics-based worm game where you have to solve like puzzles in different ways um that specific combination i haven't seen anywhere else on there so i think we lucked out in our particular um in the prototyping for this game and just by chance we found something which doesn't exist yet i, I like the fact that you're getting together daily and, and going and saying okay let's look at these releases and, and steam pages and see how we're stacking up i think that's something that not enough developers do um and i don't think bjorn's with us right now though i can see he's online or you know i'm sure he would he would chime in there as well but you know that's excellent you know that doesn't require going and, and hiring a research firm to do anything that's just simply yeah. looking at it and being honest with yourself you know the whole time you're doing it. it's like okay well this this game's doing this and well we don't need to do that well you, you might need to do it you know you, you just mm -hmm. you have to be able to look at what you're doing realistically and not be too close to it but i mean sitting down and doing just that little bit even if it is only half an hour or an hour a night uh, that's really good work i mean that, that that's impressive because you don't see enough companies doing that um all right so we're bordering on on time but i want to right, so what has been one last question and then you know if anyone out there has questions chime in andy if you've got questions well i just wanted in. to say one thing is that you have to you have to say the word quirky you have to say quirky like that <laughs> quirky quirky i have some quirky, quirky. games it's quirky. on the delivery <laughs> it's on the delivery <laughs> so Michael, what has been the single biggest hurdle the whole so far okay uh, single biggest hurdle. Um, I mean, not directly related to Fruit Crawler, but getting the business set up, that was a big hurdle. Um, if you guys uh, can get that done first, like well in advance, that would be good. Um, but like related just to Fruit Crawler, like strictly Fruit Crawler development, not including any like infrastructure or anything. Um, poof like the tail has been the biggest hurdle um i i believe uh because that mechanic is very difficult to get working correctly um like a, a bit of a bigger picture i guess um like regarding the steam store i don't know um yeah i'm sorry i don't have a good answer regarding the steam store specifically uh it's all been a big hurdle I, I i can't pick something out specifically on that i i guess um like because we analyze um we we look at the analytics uh, okay this is uh... on a daily basis uh just so that we're aware of the of uh the way the game is going and um like doing that can uh can be a bit mentally draining so i guess that could be a that could be a big hurdle but the whole process is uh very very involved um, so I can't really pick one particular part of the Steam release process out, unfortunately. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just a lot of times there's not one big hurdle. There's a shitload of small to medium hurdles. Yeah, that that's pretty much what there. this has been like. Yeah. Um, one thing that was uh, uh, interesting is, um, and I'm pretty sure I, I can say this because I'm not giving any exact numbers. Um you always hear about the uh, the stagosaurus tail right on sales where you have a big spike and then it kind of goes down and you get little smaller spikes um we weren't expecting that to also affect views so i think that was our like biggest surprise with being on steam as a platform and um it, it was really shocking for us because we've we've experimented with a bunch of different things before we even ran a gaming youtube channel for a little while and like on youtube they don't do anything i mean you, you put a video up there and you're you're not gonna they're not gonna help you out one 
So we were actually really surprised that you that you get something like that. So, uh, okay, that that was that was kind of a surprising thing when we first launched. I don't know if it was just something weird with the way I was telling people about the game or not, but figured I'd share that. I mean, it makes sense that you would see the same sort of trending, and in, in, because there's a lot of correlations between purchasing games and. and streaming games yeah so it, mm -hmm. it does it does make sense it would be interesting to see if anybody's actually done you know a lot of the research in there but that's where we also see that it's so important that you have new content coming to keep people you know interested again it's like i know i spent oh, a couple hundred hours maybe in subnautica but before it was launched while well, it was an early access but then after it launched i didn't play it that much and now that their new game is in early access i've gone back and started playing you know subnautica like that so you know there's always a um there's always a benefit no matter how small you may think it is to keeping your game in the news and keeping your your followers and your players engaged and up to date um I, I know I was just sitting here and I've been playing on uh, on Steam D, Steam DB ever since you <laughs> mentioned mentioned that, and I just site, saw huh? something a little while ago and I was like, and it jumped up. And I'm like, why is that game trending right now? And yeah. oh, it was um, the Long Dark. You know, when you look at, when you go and you look on trending games over the last seven days. There's a gigantic, huge spike in the long dark, and I'm like, why? Yeah, the hell? we saw they that too. A, they did an update yesterday, and so all of a sudden, you know, and, and it goes back to why you want people on that wish list. When you update something, when a price drops, you know, you've got an email that's going out to all your players right there. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I'm not sure what they actually added yesterday, what the what the update was, but they have. Howdy. Seen this is a, my common tread article. I've gone into some real depth on jump, some. I can't tell you exactly what you're going to need, but a gigantic jump in users from an average of around oh, I don't know a thousand players a day to Ooh. five thousand players. Ooh. Wow! Yeah. Wow! And so gotta, those are the numbers you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky. So I mean, it's I mean, but you're looking at a game that you know according to. You know, Steam Spy saying a million to two million people own that game, which at this point I would say is fairly accurate. You know, whether or not how much they paid for it's a whole different ball game. But you know, there's a lot of people that they get to hit. You know, that have that game, and so uh, oh, they did a survival mode update. So I mean, little things like that, and that's probably not a little thing, but you know, having those updates that that bring people back to the game to remind people that the game exists, you know, are, are good. You know, that's the stuff you have to do to, to create that little Stegosaurus tail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's also like uh, another reason why wish lists are good because um, I don't know if wish listing automatically gets you notifications about updates, but like whenever I wish list something, I also follow it because I want the information and those updates get sent out to the people that are following. So it's very important. Jeez. Has somebody got the fire department at their house? Yeah. Weird noise. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's, that's, that's my question. Andy, have you got anything in there? No, I'm just, uh, I just wish you good luck with the, uh, release and, you know, that's exciting. And then I'm stoked to see what your next game is. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, we're, oh, one, we're, we're really excited to see how this goes too. <laughs> one last piece of advice, uh, reach out and hire a PR firm to do your press release. Even, even if they're not doing yeah. full marketing, you know, talk to a couple of, of reputable. And if you send me a message, I can send you some, um, take that off your plate let an expert do it yeah that would make things a lot easier that's for sure <laughs> yeah. all right so with that i'm trying to check and see uh what we've got coming up next i know we have some guests queued up in the next couple of weeks i just don't know which ones are or which days so i will keep everybody posted with that we don't well, have well, a guest set for friday no, yet, we guess but... friday now nah, we can fix that though. Uh, now that the website's done, so yeah, check out the 
Uh, check out the, the new website either at thepowergroup.com or at indiegame.business. Uh, and the Indie Game Business site will not only now give you like embedded videos from the show, uh, it will, really it's cool. got all the information on our next online business matchmaking event, which is coming up mid July. Um, you can get your early bird tickets for that. Go ahead and get in the system and start, you know, planning to do lots of cool stuff on that side um but yeah that's that's all i've got for today well thank nice. you for uh hey for talking with me this was a lot of fun yeah no, it was my good pleasure stuff. thank it's you good. michael we, we, we oh, like next, time, the... next time maybe you can just come over <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be fun all right <laughs> all right thanks everybody we'll see you friday more than likely thanks everybody all right all right bye, bye.